Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 on this Sunday morning. I uh, hope you guys are having a, a good morning so far. Uh, we're going to be in James chapter 2, verses 21 through 24, as we continue uh, looking at uh, the book of James. And he's uh, speaking to us, if you remember the last couple of days, uh, we see that James is now dealing in this letter um, about uh, our works that save us from this perverse generation. And as he's been talking about this idea of faith and works and these different things, he's now getting ready to use a uh, Old Testament example that uh, is the, the, the most one of the most valuable characters in uh, Judaism, which is Abraham. So he's going to grab an example from Abraham to prove his point here, starting in verse number 21. So he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect or complete or mature. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Mm, now this is a fascinating section of scripture because... James uses the example of Abraham, the father of the faith, to prove his point that it's faith and works. Now, why that's interesting is because Paul in Romans uses the exact same example of Abraham to prove that it's just faith and not works. And because of that, people over the years have seen Paul and James almost contradicting each other because Paul uses this exact same example and says that the scripture says in Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, uh, we're justified before the sight of God by faith alone by our belief and it's not our works. James, whose book was actually written before Paul's was, comes along and he says, yeah, actually, uh, we're going to use that passage to prove that Abraham was justified by uh, not just his faith, but also by his works. And you read that and you go, so what is going on here? Again, like we've already discovered, it's important that we understand a uh, certain terminology. But actually, Paul believed this too. And we see this in Romans chapter 4, verse 2. This is, this is very interesting. Romans 4, 2. Um, he says, for if Abraham was justified by works, using the same example, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. What did Paul just say there? If Abraham was justified by works, then Abraham would have something to boast about. But his boasting wouldn't be before God, which implies what? That if there is a justification by works, Abraham could boast, but his boasting wouldn't be before God. Who would it be before? It would be before men. You see, what Paul lays out for us here in Romans chapter 4 verse 2, and what James lays out for us in James chapter 2, is that there's two justifications. Justification by faith alone is justification in the sight of God. Justification by works is not us justified in the sight of God, lest we should boast before God, but it is justification in the sight of who? In the sight of man, in the sight of each other. And James already dealt with this uh, a few verses earlier when he says, if a man comes to you and says, um, show me your faith, show me. If a man goes to another man and says, show me horizontal faith here, vertical faith, justification by faith and faith alone. Horizontal faith, man to man. Show me your faith without your works. 
I will show you, another human, my faith by my works, by my faith that's being worked out in my life. So, tying that in with what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 4, verse 2, Paul says, If Abraham was justified ha uh, by works, he would have something to boast in, but not before God. Abraham was justified in the sight of God by his faith, but he was justified in the sight of man by his works. Because in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, we learn that Abraham believed God, and it was accounted him to righteousness. And it wasn't until Genesis chapter 22... Uh, five, six, seven uh, chapters later, several years later, that we see him actually working that faith out in his life before the sight of men when he offers up his son Isaac there on Mount Moriah. So understand this picture here that James is painting for us because he's not contradicting. Both Paul and James agree that justification in the sight of God is by faith and faith alone. And both Paul and James agree that justification by works is true in the sight of each other. Because, as we talked about yesterday, I believe, we can't see faith. Only God can see faith because faith is a matter of the heart. So in order for a human being to see another human being's faith, it has to be worked out. It has to be demonstrated in some sort of way. So the example that's used is that of Abraham. Abraham's, uh, Abraham was justified in the sight of God in chapter 15 by simply believing. Abraham was justified in the sight of men, Genesis chapter 22, by putting his faith into action. You say, now wait a minute, Hagen, because there on Mount Moriah, who was around for uh, Abraham's faith to be proved to? What man was Abraham's faith being justified in the sight of because it was just him and his son there on the mountain? That's true. Except for, remember, his servants stopped partially the way up and Abraham's faith was proven there on Mount Moriah to Isaac and Abraham's faith was proven to Abraham. Those two people, his faith will prove. So in our lives, we need to realize that we're justified in the sight of God, uh, that, that we are made right by faith, faith alone. Uh, Paul believed it, James believed it. But our justification before the sight of men is when our faith is actually worked out in our lives. And like Abraham, it might not seem that it might not seem like there's anyone around for our faith to be proved to, but there are. Even if that person is you, even if it's just simply you, God sets us up. God gives us opportunity to even prove to ourselves of the justification that has taken place in our lives through our faith that is being worked out. Tomorrow, he's going to use one more Old Testament example. He used Abraham, a prominent Jewish guy, to uh, prove this illustration. Tomorrow, he's going to use Rahab the harlot a Gentile, and talk about how she was justified by works in the sight of men as well. But we'll save that one for tomorrow. Uh, we got church this morning uh, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. You guys are invited to come physically to the building. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7, so be sure to come out and uh, uh, join us for church there as we worship and uh, study the Word. But this morning, remember from James chapter 2 in this section, that James and Paul are not contradicting. Paul talks about justification before the sight of God. James is talking about justification before the sight of men. Abraham was justified in the sight of God in Genesis chapter 15. Abraham was justified in the sight of men in Genesis chapter 22. We're talking about two things. Both are justification, but who we're being justified in front of is the key. Justification in the sight of God is due through faith, which only God can see. Justification in the sight of man is through our works, which man can see. Man can grab a hold of works. Man cannot see faith. So, again, we're in this section that a lot of people misunderstand, but we're just slowly going through it and understanding it. Tomorrow, we'll look at it a little bit more, and then we'll kind of 
wrap up this idea of faith and works that James deals with, and then we'll move in actually to chapter three the next day and kind of move into some 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 more stuff. So anyway, hope you guys have a great Sunday morning, and uh, we'll see you either live here on Facebook, on our website, or here in the church physically as we get together on this day and worship the Lord together.